Now, there it is with an 8-inch wheel, which is the one I'm going to use on here. I just got those for a spare for my big 10-inch buffer over there. See, it just mounts on this shaft. Well, let's take the shaft in here and lock it down. Just like a drill. You know, you, ain't, you don't need no lessons on that. Now here's some sharpening stones that I bought that have a quarter inch shank on them. Different sizes, different shapes. They're just like the buffs. They're the uh, little, what do you call them, felt bobs that you use for polishing. All different size bobs. You can see if that table is mounted right there, it'll cover this whole range through here if you need to use this table. And of course the table goes in and out wherever you want to set it. And I'll give you the next arrangement. See if I put this kind of wheel on, just on the shaft adapter itself, this table is not in the right spot. So, I just move it to over here somewhere. Not rocket science. Now everybody makes shaft ex extenders. This is these are the ones that Surgi Grip Super Grit sells. They're not nearly as nice as the ones I got from Caswell or from Brightworks. They're much nicer. But Super Grit does sell this. Now this is a wait a minute, that's not it. Where the hell is it? Stand by. It is right here. Super Grit does sell this ticket. I don't I haven't found it anyplace else. This is a five, half inch by half inch, meaning this is threaded half inch. If this extension shaft is sticking out like this, I can screw this on here like this and add something right here. A wheel, buffer, anything. Another spinning something or other. Maybe one of these. This is our rail on a shaft extender. Or maybe one of these grinding wheels if I didn't want to have it already set up like that. That's a pretty nice ticket right there. I already had to thread the tapered spindle for the buffing wheels. That would slide on here and lock down with the two set screws. Well that works good except it messes up the threads on here and you got to back the nut off to get the threads back in shape. Or either get you a thread fixer, whatever they have a name for it. But with this ticket right here, you don't have to do that. You can just screw it on there and put this thing on here. Now, the best thing, and vice versa this thing. In other words, you could take this end right here and screw it on here and eliminate that nut. This will screw all the way up against whatever you have on this extender. Eliminate that nut completely from this standpoint. You know what I mean? And then you have the little nut right here that you put your your buffing wheel on or your sanding wheel or whatever it is you want to put on there on that in that area right there that's a nice creature I think it's nine dollars and a half from super grit that's the only one I've been able to find and I may end up buying one or two more of them just to have them because they're pretty neat stand by you have a lot of extra shafts sticking out here, you know, on these little thin wheels. Might as well utilize it, I think. And this gives you the ability to do that. If you don't want to screw this baby on here just for a buffing wheel. You could put the 8 inch uh, scissor wheels right on here. That would be cool, because this, this is only like 5 and a quarter, 5 and 3 quarters in diameter. But that baby is 3 inches wider. 
or inch and a half overall, you know. So it's got some nice features. This particular ticket right here. I'll find the ticket and give you the number to it in a little while. Stand by. Okay, there it is. Got two studs, one at each end for this location, two studs for this location. The bar will slide in and out, lock in place with this locking arm. I'm done with this uh, mousetrap. For right now, that is. Here's what we got. You know about the sister wheels. You already know about the stones and the little bob, felt bobs, and the tapered uh, spindle thing. We got a buffing wheel we can put on there. We got a cutoff wheel we can put on there. We got a white 150 or 120 grit sharpening stone. You know about the pink stone. Here we got a real coarse stone. If we get a lawnmower blade or something, we don't want to use a belt. Clean up wheel. Uh, different shafts. Some of these that go into the drill thing. You know, there's something I'm forgetting. Here it is. I got to put it on the shaft thing. That nylon cleanup wheel. I've had really good luck with this on some things. But if this doesn't work, you go to that. But I really prefer the sister wheels for cleaning up uh, lopers and pruners and yard. I used to use this all the time. And that. But after using this with that really 4MAX coarse sussel compound, this is a good job right here. I got some uh, simple green that works pretty good. I got uh, alcohol there, sussel green here, and WD-40 in here. Got a big can of WD-40 that I just fill this up with every now and then. WD-40 does a lot of good things for different, you know, it's good for a lot of different things. Good for the wood handles, it's good to clean up with, with that kerosene and oil or whatever the hell is in WD-40. But it works good. I bought this at the thrift store the other day. Carry all this stuff in. I stick all the wheels down in here. And all the other stuff. Tools and stuff go along the sides. Pretty neat little bag for, for $2.00. Okay, got my scissor sharpener in here. The table, since I'm going to leave this in one spot, I'll put this in the back and mount it out of the way right there. It'll be on the table, you know, all the time, but in reverse. Okay, stand by. When I'm breaking in this new sisal, these two sisal wheels, with this Formax really abrasive compound. I noticed that, well this always occurs, the, you know, the stuff blows off, but my table is going to be in the way, so I'm going to take my table off and just use it when I need it. Okay, there it is, out of the damn way. Right, back to the Formax. All right. I'll see you in a little while. I picked up a new lawnmower blade today. I got, this is my third one. I got one that's really, really old. You can see we all have sandy yards here. You can see the, how much of the blade has been worn off by the sand. Sand is terrible stuff. Fourteen bucks. No, actually sixteen something with tax. You remember this ticket right here from whatever it was Sunday or Monday? I went detected. Let's crack it open. Well, it's Saturday, a little after two. I'm back from the knife gig. It's uh, bleak, bleak, I say. I had uh, 
two shuns, two pocket knives, and one pampered chef knife. Five knives total. Low Tide Tim had 18 knives at the market where he was. The old timer had me today. I left my cell phone home. I left the camera home. But, there's a butt here. I just got a call from my guy says, I need some knife sharpening. Can I bring them by? I said, you certainly, you certainly can. So he's on his way. I don't know what they're going to be. we have to wait and see. Kitchen knives, I presume. Stand by. Heather came over with Canyon. My fig tree is coming along good. They worked in the garden, and Chris, they started a new garden this year. They pulled all the pavers up, put all the pavers back down, weeded all around the pavers, tomato plants, and cucumbers. Chris is finalizing them now. We had to put a new cage up. We had a old flash of green cage for five or six years. Finally, it just deteriorated. The guy next door is getting his grass cut. I think that's what I'll have to do tomorrow. The back 40 looks bad. Indian, wild Indian. He's there. <laughs> I got him a possum night before last, right here, right where we were standing. Big old possum. He was shaking him in the up in there, and the possum played dead, and Jack came inside, and the possum took off. One time he brought a little teeny one in the house. Played dead, he brought it in. What did you think of that possum? Hmm? Were you scared? Jack wasn't scared, though. Where are you, big old Jack? Balls. They're the only kind of balls he's got. He likes them. <laughs> Man, he went to the OBX for a week. You know, he goes every year. Last year he did the same thing. They rent the whole house for a week, like 10 or 12 of them. He'd be detecting every day. He got there yesterday at, I think, 3 or 4. I ain't heard from him. But I'm sure I'll get some kind of report. He's been under the weather a little bit. So, we'll see how that goes, too. All right, stand by. Let's see what them knives look like when he gets here. The knives just showed up. We got two nice Wolstoffs, one nice Henkel, and one Chinese. That'll help the day a little bit. Okay. Well, we're getting ready to do the roundup of what we've done the last few days. Not no spins though. This is that little what's it thing that I found last week. The only day I went and detected. We thought it was a button. Well, I don't know what it is, but it was. You can see it's flat looking. Sort of looks like a button. It broke when I started knocking the dust off of it. Nothing special, but. You never know what you're going to find in them little what's-its. Well, let's start right by showing you some gold that my buddy Rick found. You know my buddy Rock on Rick from Charlotte? He says, what a day. He found a gigantic class ring. 2006 10 carat high school ring in a sports park or parking lot or something in Charlotte. You need to take a look at it. And it had the guy's name in it and everything. Well, a couple of days later, he found the guy. There he is right there. Ring and return story. Pretty interesting. But you need to see the ring. I thought I had pictures of the ring. Stand by. I do have pictures there on my iPad. I, didn't, I, didn't, I knew I'd had them somewhere. Look at that baby. Look at that thing right there. <laughs> Good gracious, that's a fat ticket right there. 18 grams he said it weighed. The ice is not real. That's what the kid told him when he returned it. That looked good in my scoop, or anybody's scoop right there. 
see what else I got for you. Beaver is uh, in Pennsylvania, or was, relic hunting around his brother's property in some bridge that George Washington went over. But his results weren't too good. Our buddy Beam Digger, he found a nice gold chain. Look at that thing. It says Chunky Gold. Beam Digger. You need to check him out. You know our buddy Carter from New Jersey. He traded his, uh, what do you call it? Uh, YouTube name was De Detector Comparisons. It says metal detecting a very old swim area, number four. It's a cool video. They get, they found so much gold up. I'm wanting to go crazy. Him and Gary Storm, and another buddy of theirs. Look at that old ticket right there. Detector Comparisons, Carter. You remember? Um, hold on a minute. A swan on the central coast has found that big beach with all the big cuts on it. He's found uh, the epic cut that just won't die. More treasure. <laughs> He's on a solid hot goose out there in California. Now the next thing I'm going to share with you is uh, our buddy Patrick who hunts in Hawaii. And I can't remember where in Hawaii, but I'll show you in a second. What I want to really show you is his uh, AT Pro. He had some trouble with it on his last hunt, but what a lot of people didn't notice is the way he has it mounted. He said he might do another video. I got to find it. Hold okay. It says metal detecting in Hawaii, May the 5th, Waikiki Beach. And his name is Pat 71 63 Rick. Well, he's been around a while. He, he hunts the uh, dry sand, the edge of the water. But the way he's got his AT Pro mounted, you AT Pro guys should take a look at it. It's uh, much more ergonomic, so comfortable and easier to swing. I happened to notice it, so I asked him. He said he might do a video on how he modified it. But it's very interesting for you AT Pro guys. My buddy Tody in California, he's been on a solid hot goose, like like Michael says, uh, two more rings for the carabiner. Look at them tickets. Little gold would be just a ticket right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I told you about detecting Denmark yet or not, but he found pieces of an old bracelet. And now he's found the last piece. Detect in Denmark. Now I can't pronounce his name because it's in Russian, but there it is. He's a beach hunter like us. See it? You need to check it out. It's, it's in Russian. You can't understand him, but he does pretty good on the beach. Finds a lot of taquitos. You hungry, boo boo? Yeah, I know you're hungry. It's morning. You're starving, aren't you? The boo boo. I figured he'd be crowing by now, but he's not crowing right yet. That's it, four guys. I'm trying to do this roundup for two or three days worth of stuff.